guys, it's Reagan and welcome to the start of another reading vlog. This reading vlog I'm very excited about because I'm focusing on two books, quite frankly, I've been putting off, but also two books that I feel like I'm going to love so much. So it's gonna be very satisfying that I'm one, finally reading them, and two, because I think they're both gonna be five star reads. So without further ado, let's chat about the two books on my TBR. Alrighty, so my TBR is rather blue <laughs> this time around. Um, but I have two books. Honestly, I'm hoping I can actually read from beginning to end. The first is Bel Canto by Ann Patchett. I have gone on and on and on about how I've been wanting to read more Ann Patchett books this year, and I've yet to read any, and it's already March, so. We're stopping that and we're starting a book by her. Um, and I decided to start with Bel Canto. I feel like this maybe isn't the one that's most talked about, but the synopsis just really called out to me. It's basically about a hostage situation and about the relationships that form between the hostages and the hostage takers, which sounds quite interesting to me. And then I also really wanna to get to Yumi and the Nightmare Painter, which I've been putting off for so long and I don't understand why at all. This is a Brandon Sanderson secret project, also a fantasy standalone novel, which I'm also looking forward to. I love fantasy series, but we love a standalone as well. That is my TBR. I'm quite literally about to go make a cup of tea now and sit down and start, I think, Bel Canto first and just kind of pivot back and forth between these two books because I'm a chaotic reader like that. I like to read more than one book at one time, especially if they are different vibes. I'm at my desk because I'm downloading the new Stardew Valley. Well, I'm downloading Stardew Valley on my computer because there was a new patch release today and I now want to try on my PC. So my first PC run through coming soon, but I did sit down and start Bel Canto. I read 40 pages. And I'm really liking this book so far. This is my first experience with Ann Patchett's writing, but I find it to be very gripping and engrossing. Um, we're following a lot of different characters in a very intense situation. Again, this is like a hostage situation, but, but it doesn't have like a thriller lean. I've only read 40 pages, so I have more to read, but we're just so, kind of like deeply in people's minds and brains like before during this sort of situation and all I can say so far writing style has really captivated me concept I just feel like is so strong in terms of exploring these themes and I'm looking forward to reading more my plan is just kind of like slowly read like 50 or so pages of this every day this week in betwixt reading Yumi and the Nightmare Painter so far so good right Millie yes <laughs> I've started a new puzzle. It's book oriented. It's like a book club puzzle. We all be further along later this week, but I'm also gonna sit down and watch The Traders, which is like my show obsession at the moment. I've moved on to UK Traders because I've caught up on the American Traders. So should be a good night. And then we're eating leftovers. Hi friends, I have laundered and it is time for dinner. Lucky for us, it's easy because it's already made. We're just heating up some leftover chili which I'm so excited about. And I think I'm gonna maybe watch a docu-series and just work on my puzzle tonight. Sounds relaxing. And then I'm gonna start Yumi and the Nightmare Painter in bed, which I'm pumped that I'm finally getting to it, especially because I should close my fridge, especially because we're in a year of another Cosmere release. So I feel like it's important that I catch back up, you know? Good morning, friends. I'm about to get up and ready for the day, but I'm here just enjoying my cup of coffee. And I have a reading update for Yumi. Oof, this book's heavy. And The Nightmare Painter by Brandon Sanderson. So far, I'm really liking this book. I'm reading it pretty quickly. I'm on page 100, so I'm definitely hoping I'll continue to be able to make good progress on this today. It's very much giving, in a word, Freaky Friday vibes, which is always one of my favorite tropes in media it's always so fun there's an element of humor a lot of humor if i'm being honest um but to take a step back this book follows our two main characters yumi and the nightmare painter and we're first introduced to them and get a sense of their daily lives meeting them on their own separate planets this book's also narrated by one of our favorite characters the same narrator from tress of the emerald sea which i also love and makes sense because this individual has traveled to a lot of places. So it makes sense that we could experience him as our narrator telling us this story about these two characters on their own planets. But first we are introduced to Painter, who is a nightmare painter for a living. His world is one of darkness and there's not a lot of light and there's not a lot of color. 
And there are these things that basically can form called nightmares. And it's his job um, to basically paint to neutralize their threat because they feed off of nightmares and they, and they can become more and more human the longer they're left to roam around this world. They can be dangerous. Um, Painter is kind of a self-declared loner. He's very emo. He's very insecure. He's charming but young all of those things and he struggles with connections and he's kind of listless at his job like he doesn't know what he wants but he wants like a grander life but he doesn't really have the motivation to really put himself out there in that way then we're introduced to our main character yumi who lives on a different planet but they can like see each other's planet if that makes sense yumi's planet is one of a lot of light um it's very hot uh, there's like floating plants and Yumi is like a really important spiritual figure. She was basically picked as a baby um, to serve the population as someone who performs kind of a ritualistic art to make spirits appear and those spirits are then sort of harvested for food and resources for communities. But so much of Yumi's life is structured from the moment she wakes up, she has certain rituals she has to do. She's always surrounded by people wanting, desiring anything besides the ritual of her life is very much frowned upon. And Yumi is like a very sweet and kind person. She doesn't want to make anyone's life difficult or be selfish, but she also has an obvious desire to have something for herself. So she's feeling a little torn because of that. Fast forward this book, again, it's Freaky Friday. So they're sort of connected um, through some type of prophecy of needing to save the spirits of these two planets. And they keep waking up in the other person's body. I like how Brandon Sanderson has done this though. They're waking up in, the other, in each other's bodies, but to them, they look like they have their own body but the outside world interacts with them like it's the other person. And then in kind of spirit form, the other person is there to kind of help them navigate and pass throughout their lives. And it's just charming and funny. And then in that in combination with our narrator, who is also quite silly and he just has great humor too it's just like a really charming situation but set in a really interesting world um brandon sanderson's use of light and magic between these two planets and art is really cool not to mention uh, because i have this beautiful illustrated edition there's art throughout this book which makes a lot of sense and sometimes it's kind of like watercolory which does make sense because of painter that is how he paints but also I have these like full color illustrations throughout it too which is just truly stunning so yeah I read a quick 100 pages I'm excited to see how the rest of this book is going to play out I feel like it's going to be a good balance of like light-hearted but entertaining but we'll see I still have a lot to read and discover but now I need to get dressed and get on with my day um I procrastinated a bit but that's okay but anyway reading update I've read 150 pages so far for this vlog which I am quite pleased with. I got dressed today, which feels like a minor miracle. It's a cute outfit too. I'm brewing afternoon coffee, judgment-free zone here. And uh, we're gonna decide on my afternoon sweet treat together. I'm already eating a Reese's egg. What should I have? Peanut butter patties. My last Girl Scout cookie packet from this season. I also have some chocolate covered popcorn, which is like really good salty sweets. Hmm. I think I'm gonna go peanut butter patties. I'm clearly in a bit of a peanut butter mood. So we're gonna, we're gonna make this and I'm gonna sit down and do some reading. And then Baldur's Gate or Stardew Valley. I'm so torn between my two loves at the moment. Baldur's Gate and Stardew Valley, you know? What's the girl to do? I opted for the Girl Scout cookies and now I'm gonna sit down and read more. You mean the nightmare painter. Hello everyone, it's the next day. I apologize for not appropriately checking in. I had a dentist appointment this morning, no cavities, happy to report, feeling the high of not having to go back. <laughs> But I'm back on my reading game. I've read 200 pages of You Mean the Nightmare Painter. I'm reading this book so quickly. I was not, I didn't really know what to expect going into this, but this book is so charming, so fun and funny. It's giving me the same feeling I feel like I felt when I was reading Tress of the Emerald Sea. These books are different, but they definitely live within the same, well, literally they live in the same universe, but they live in like the same collection. Like if this was like a bind up of two books or something, um, they go together in that way. Like fun characters, coming of age, 
funny. We have a well-known narrator um, who exists in both books. There's just this like lightheartedness that is going alongside some serious themes that I'm appreciating. So I've already described Yumi and Painter. They're kind of having a Freaky Friday moment between their two worlds and universe. And there's just like so many things that I'm just like entertained by. Obviously we have their relationship within this book, watching them begin to understand each other. And what I really love to see is watching them like push each other because they are obviously coming in as an outsider to their life. So they're kind of an impartial, unbiased perspective on the decisions that they're making, but also perhaps situations that they put up with and kind of an empathetic but challenging ear for each character, which I like. They're both also just 19. So they still have a lot of the world to experience and and I just like that element a lot. Particularly we have Yumi who has basically been living as this sort of spiritual entity her entire life. She has no friends. She's not allowed to have friends. She's not allowed to have interests. She's not allowed to have any of these things. She wakes and prays and works for the betterment of her people. It's a very noble job. It's an important job, but she's also a 19 year old girl. And you see Painter have to live through her, do a terrible job. So there's lots of situational humor happening within this book, um, but also question how some people treat her, talk to her and like, he challenges her to like be comfortable with accepting things for herself, particularly when Yumi is living in his world, kind of having for the first time certain experiences like shopping for clothes, making friends. And it's just like a really sweet situation to see alongside this just like fun back and forth that exists between our two main characters. There is the mystery of like, why do they switch places to begin with? And there does appear to be some sort of spiritual, fantastical reason that they need to figure out together. Um, and I like that too. It's just like very endearing. And then I also appreciate the sprinkling of Cosmere that Brandon Sanderson has included in this, not only with our well-known narrator that we're encountering, but there's also some other figures that we would know their abilities based on other books, but it's very uniquely contained to this story. It's not like you need to have read Stormlight Archive to like understand everything that's happening in this book, but there are some nice Easter eggs if you have read the other books within the Cosmere, which I'm also enjoying. But this book is just like, I'm just charmed. I'm just charmed. Aesthetically, this book is also really pretty. The two worlds are very different from a visual point of view. Painters from the sort of dark, kind of futuristic, urban city kind of grim city setting where these nightmares stalk and roam the streets whereas Yumi is from this bright kind of deserty very hot um kind of beautiful aesthetic world that's just like they contrast each other quite a bit too so I like that as well there's like visual contrast character contrast because our characters kind of have different personalities mystery at play it's just I'm reading it fast because I just really like the characters and I'm curious to see what's going to happen next. The illustrations throughout it are so lovely too and make so much sense given that art is so central stage in this, but I'm having a great time. I definitely feel like I'm gonna be able to finish this book quickly because it just reads so fast. So 200 pages down and I've read 40 pages of Bel Canto. I'm gonna read more of that today. Almost 250 pages read for the vlog. I'm pleased. Brewing some delicious coffee. I'm gonna sit down now and read more Yumi and the Night Painter and have a cup of afternoon coffee. And we're back to vlogging as planned, normal. I will not forget. March Madness actually started today. So some friends are coming over to watch our alma mater play in the first round, so fingers crossed. And I think we're gonna have some pizza, which should be delicious. Isn't that right, Matilda? So uh, that's also the plan, but for now, you mean the night painter. I'm reading this so fast. It's so much cuter than I was expecting, which is always such a fun surprise, you know? Let's read. was very much consumed. We have one lone slice left. Matilda tried to call dibs on it from the other room. 
I'm watching a little bit of basketball because UT played tonight and we somehow made it out of round one. So there we go. Now I'm about to go put my pajamas on and I'm going to put the Traders UK on, work on my puzzle for a little bit longer, maybe have a bowl of ice cream, and then I'm going to read more of Yumi and the Nightmare Painter. I'm on page. I'm officially like two thirds of the way through that book and I'm having just such a wonderful time reading it. I just really appreciate like how the characters lift each other up, challenge each other. Like there is that core mystery at the heart of it, but it's so much about characters pushing themselves outside of their own boundaries and reestablishing like what they feel like they're allowed to receive from people and from the world. And it's just really heartwarming because of it and incredibly excuse me entertaining so i'm definitely going to read more of that tonight and maybe a little more bel canto too because i meant to read some of that yesterday and i want to read some of that today so i think i will pick up both of those books in bed and enjoy but for now it's puzzle and traders time so that's what we're going to do hello me and my rain sounds are reading i'm so sleepy the dentist really took it out of me today but i've just passed the 300 page mark and I love this book. There's also so much training and learning. I love the Freaky Friday element and all of the just situational humor that's resulting from this book, the unlikely friendships. I'm just so endeared. And I'm so curious about this mystery. I feel like I'm on like the brink of figuring out, but still I can't put together all the pieces, which is also nice. Good morning, and I should actually say good afternoon. <laughs> it's Friday, and I have gotten caught up with a variety of things, but I'm happy to be sitting down because I wanted to update y'all that I finished Yumi and the Nightmare Painter. This book is like 474 pages. And I must say, I feel like I read this book really quickly. It was such a delightful combination of things. I loved the narrator and the humor there. I really enjoyed the characters and their individual and then journey together. It was interesting to read a book that transparently was pretty romance forward for Brandon Sanderson, but in a way that I really enjoyed. And I appreciated that he did kind of a more first love coming of age romance because it was endearing and you're really rooting for the characters. The world itself was interesting. It's cool because it really shows how the Cosmere is in fact a universe. So the types of planets and stories we can consume in this place are truly endless and not everything needs to be like the biggest, most significant plot sequence to be enjoyable and entertaining and add to the Cosmere. I feel like Tress and this book both do like an excellent job, like introducing us to really rootable protagonists, giving us a story that is engaging and interesting. Like there's a mystery at play here, but also like it's a contained story at the same time. And there are heroes in so many different ways in everyday and ordinary life or just ordinary people doing extraordinary things, which is like very much the heart of like both of these stories. It was just like so endearing and like a classic tale in a lot of ways. The world was beautifully constructed too. Like it was very visual while reading it. And I felt like the twists of the plot worked well. It very much gave like fable vibes and I would say the same for Tress of the Emerald Sea like it has a sort of central message that you can take something away with um and it was just like very endearing you know and I just I had a really good time reading this book and I'm really glad I finally picked it up because I love Tress I didn't love the frugal wizard's guide to surviving medieval England but I feel like I'm back and back being a fan of the secret projects with Yumi and the Nightmare Painter because this was just so sweet and it kind of fed, I want, I kind of, I don't want Brandon Sanderson to write more romance necessarily, but like there are some romantic plot lines of his that I've enjoyed in the past. And there's also one in particular in a certain Stormlight Archives that I'm really into that I would love more of. So I'm just thinking about Stormlight 5 coming out later this year, but I'm, I'm happy to say I've read over 500 pages. I'm planning to shift back now to Bel Canto and read more of that today and tomorrow and obviously wrap this vlog up. But we've read, and I'm also happy to say it's Friday, Clay went out to go get me my hyperfixation sandwich. So things are looking great. You guys already know the drill. Hyperfixation sandwich has been acquired. Ooh. Oops. And she's beautiful. Clay and I split this, though I have been known to eat an entire one as well. It's a beautiful day and Miss Matilda is enjoying the sunshine. 
as she should and as she deserves. Y'all are about to witness the unleashing of Matilda. Let me set you up so you have a good vantage point. Three, two, one, everyone. Where's your bowl, Matilda? Where's your bowl? Now that Matilda has been fed, I'm not going to pester Clay outside. Hi friends, let's make dinner together. Dinner will be fast and rather easy because we are making some burgers. So I have some cheese, I have some buns. I'm gonna steam some broccoli. <laughs> Look how big this broccoli is. On the side, burger patties. And then I also have some corn, which should be delish. So uh, there we go, I'm gonna put this all together. dinner is all done. We got broccoli, burgers, I got my corn all roasty toasty. We're gonna go watch Summer House. And dinner is served. It's Saturday morning and I've decided I want to make some bread, you know? Let's do this thing. <laughs> the no need recipe, so this is actually really easy. So I have my bowl, bread flour, which I need to refill. Three cups flour. One, two, three. Two teaspoons salt. And then two teaspoons instant yeast. No blooming over here, folks. Water is 105 degrees. We're gonna mix this in. Done. I have truly been having the laziest Saturday morning ever and it's been great. But I wanted to do an update because I am almost 50% of the way through Bel Canto. I've read 100 pages, so not quite 50%, maybe like 40%. And I'm really liking this book. The writing style is excellent and it's really, it really pulls you in. The setup and what I can really say about this book like hasn't changed much. It's literally about a hostage situation at a birthday party um, full of like unlikely people. And you're reading this story from so many different perspectives and experiences. The general of the people who took all these people hostage from a translator to a powerful businessman, to an opera singer, to a waiter, to one of the young men who were part of this group that took the people hostage. No, a very intense event play out, but how Ann Patchett is focusing on the emotions of things. It's like, you have empathy, and understanding for people involved on all sides. And it's just like not the expected approach for a story like this. Entrancing too, because the emotions are so intense and like sometimes you pivot back and forth with those feelings, similar to how the characters, like something very intense will happen and like your anxiety will rise, but then you'll settle back in to kind of the cadence of living once more. And people from all different backgrounds are a part of this situation too. I don't know, it's just been a really intriguing 
read so far. Like the back says it's a universe of its own and that feels so true because this is such an isolated situation. All of these people are trapped together with no connection to the outside world for however long they're going to be in this home together. And it's just interesting. And it's just like not what you would expect again for a story like this. Um, and I really appreciate sort of the dynamic approach M. Hatchett's taking with the characters and the emotions and the connections that are beginning to form between characters. It's so interesting. Also, there is this, if there's one consistent thing, I would say like the love for music and opera and how art, like how people can have a passion for something and art from all over the world, from so many different types of professions, walks of life, and like this thing can be appreciated and loved like no matter where you're from. Kind of like this great unifier of humanity too. Anyway, I've been enjoying reading this quite a bit. All right, friends, I'm down here because it's been six hours, so it's time to cook the bread. So let's turn this bad boy out. Here's what we're working with. Looking nice, looking bubbly. Gonna heavily flour my surface. Hope for the best here. And my loaf is done. Hi guys, it's Reagan and welcome to the end of the vlog. The next day, I just wanted to pop in and wrap up everything I was able to read over the course of this vlog because I actually read quite a lot if I do say so myself. I read almost 700 pages which I'm really pleased with. Obviously I read the entirety of Yumi and the Nightmare Painter. This was so delightful. I also think a really great place to start with Brandon Sanderson. Um, it's a really approachable story. It's a really heartwarming story but it still has like key elements to Brandon Sanderson's writing in general. I feel the same with Tress of the Emerald Sea. Like it's a great introductory book to kind of high fantasy but also kind of dip your toes into Brandon Sanderson to see if some of his concepts are for you, but it's also a standalone. It's really straightforward, not too complicated, but still like very engaging and interesting to read. I wanna say I'm surprised that I liked this as much as I did, but I was just really unsure. But after seeing so many positive reviews about it, I decided to give it a chance and I'm happy to report I was not disappointed by this book at all. It just was really delightful and I'm excited to read The Last Secret Project soon. And then I also was able to read 200 pages of Bel Canto. Um, I need to finish this book, but I'm really liking this book too. It's kind of a hard one to talk about because like in everything that's happened, like not a lot has happened. It's really about these like intimate and interesting relationships that would never be able to be formed but are beginning to form in this unusual circumstance that is this book. We're following people from literally all around the world. Many of them can't communicate directly but you begin to see like unlikely bonds begin to form anyway or they communicate through unlikely ways like music or food um, and it's just really intriguing. I also know that this book is kind of a slower burn until it's not a slow burn at all and kind of where I'm at the plot is beginning to pick up but I do appreciate that Aunt Patch has sort of taken her time in the beginning of this book. It's not perfect I would say there's some kind of flat character representations but I'm still really drawn in by the writing style and just her approach to this story and I'm still like really captivated by every scene. It has a level of drama but not for the reasons that you would expect. Like I feel like I'm hanging on to every interaction because of the possibility of connection, less about the possibility of like losing your life, if you will, given the circumstances of this book. So yeah, I'm excited to finish this as well. But these are the two books I was able to complete over the course of this vlog. I hope you guys enjoyed and I will see you soon with another video soon. Goodbye.